feel better, you know what I mean? I'm still, still a bit disappointed I didn't get to finish there over Tony, but he's one of the toughest ever to step in the cage, so the fact that I won every round, I'm pleased with myself. Very soon, there will be a battle in the lightweight division that perhaps will give the young prospect a ticket into the top 15. Because at UFC 304, one of the most popular fighters in the face of Paddy Pimblett will collide in the cage with Bobby King Green. I don't watch his fights, so I really don't know much about the guy. I just see him doing this little thing. I'm like, who does that? Who does that? Today, we will remember the best performances of the baddie and try to find out if he can get past the tough and dangerous veteran. Number 10. Nathan Thompson We start today's compilation with a debut fight in the professional career of Paddy Pimblett. After dozens of successful performances, the Scouser figured that he was ready to get to the next level and sign with the OMMAC organization. On October the 16th of 2012, he entered the octagon against a no less or even more experienced prospect. We'll say straight away that the Liverpoolian decided to test himself in the professional league at a rather young age when he wasn't as big as he is now. That's why this fight happened in the bantamweight division. Speaking about the action, everything was quite simple, at least for our hero. Pimblet immediately started to press his opponent to the fence and attack him with hands and legs. It made Thompson converge and defend with a clinch. However, this decision played a bad joke on him. Paddy quickly snatched the initiative and took him to the ground. The stoppage from this position was just a matter of time because the baddie very quickly hammered Nathan to a TKO until the referee stepped in. A great start of the professional career. Number 9. Conrad Hayes Don't be surprised with time skips because we picked the best performances of Paddy Pimblett that went viral over the internet. On May the 3rd of 2014, the Scouser had his 7th professional bout and a 4th inside the famous promotion in close circles called Cage Warriors. In fact, it was its 68th event and our hero performed on the prelims. As you can see, just a year and a half after his debut, the Liverpoolian prospect made great progress in terms of skills, confidence and fight IQ. A bright testament to that is the middle of the first round where he decided to jump the triangle from the clinch, which made his opponent take action. After getting to the ground, Paddy instantly started pounding Conrad's head with vicious elbows which made him lose focus and then he momentarily took Hayes' hand and executed an armbar, earning himself another victory by stoppage. Flying triangle is a risky move, that's why you don't really see people going for it. But when you're good at it and you're confident in it, you can do it. I'm on the bottom just chipping away with the elbows and in the end, Conrad's trying to escape the triangle that much that I get my angle and I can also twist on the arm and that's when he taps. Down. Looks like he might be finding some space and that's the tap! Big submission win for Paddy Pimblett. It was a battle of two prospects and it's the local fight. Number 8. Stephen Martin this is my favourite fight, the fight after Conrad Hayes, my featherweight debut. He was 3-2 and two, but he was a black belt in Jiu-Jitsu and his two losses were against like very good people on the UK scene. He took hard fights so young in his career. Just like the last fight, first 10 seconds I head kicked Conrad Hayes, scrambled his brain. Look what happens to me in 10 seconds here. This fight is notable because the Englishman showed his heart and endurance, which is oftentimes inherent only to experienced and mature veterans. Despite big problems that Martin caused the baddie, the latter managed to withstand the challenge and resist his vis-a-vis, -vis, and to such an extent that he didn't go out to the second round. In one of the sequences, Paddy sliced Stephen's face so badly that the blood started covering up his whole face, and it happened to be the reason for another victory that did not go to the hands of the judges. I've never seen so much blood come out of someone's head that quick. I elbowed him and there was blood down my arm where it squirted out that quick over my arm. He had like a proper Harry Potter scar. Harry Potter? And I was like walking back over towards my corner and I'll never forget turning around and just screaming at him, just going, ah! 
it's the first ever time that I've I danced around in the cage as well after the run. I just started going, going bananas. <laughs> Number seven, Kevin Petchy. As strangely as it sounds, the next fight of today is the Scousers' very next bout after Stephen Martin. On March the 28th of 2015, Pimblet took an opportunity given by the local league full contact contender to fight for their featherweight championship. It was the main event of the 12th tournament which took place on Paddy's home soil in Manchester. We won't beat around the bush for too long and just say that the Englishman was lucky once again as he managed to overcome the obstacles and knockdowns and get the victory. In those one and a half rounds the fight lasted, the initiative was constantly switching hands. Petchy's strong side was his striking technique which caused Pimblet a lot of trouble while he himself dominated on the ground and constantly threatened Kevin with submission attempts. After Paddy went down to the ground from a hard shot in the second round, featherweight title, oh big right hand from Kevin Petchy. He took the bull by the horns and dragged the Frenchman to the lower level. From there, he quickly grabbed his neck and locked the submission choke, thus extending his winning streak under the loud screams of the cheering crowd. No pressure, man. Nothing. <laughs> no one want to win anyway, so what's the point of feeling pressure? Don't take your eyes off your opponent, that's where you get caught slipping. Got caught slipping once or twice there, like he clocked me, but... Number 6. Miguel Haro Let's keep the set tendency intact and get to the next fight in the baddies' career. On June the 20th of the same year, the same organization offered our hero to defend his title in Manchester in the main event of the evening. It would be silly to decline such an opportunity, so Pimblet performed at FCC 13 where he put his belt on the line against the Spanish. The outcome of this fight was decided by Miguel Haro's fatal mistake which cost him the victory on that fateful night. Speaking about the champion, he demonstrated a noticeable improvement from the first fight in this promotion and felt a lot more confident on the feet. It made the Spanish go for a takedown and work on the ground. Get it? He himself went to the bear's lair in hopes that he would be safer in there than outside of it. Haro's analytical skills did not live up to the expectations and soon he lost the position and found himself between the hammer and anvil. The Scouser managed to finish him before the end of the round, taking his back and then Miguel's neck, making him surrender and successfully defending his featherweight championship. Get any black belt you want and I will smoke you. Any black belt you want and I'm, we'll have a 20 minute grapple. We won't even have an MMA fight. We'll have a 20 minute grapple and you'll get choked. You're, you're asking irrelevant questions, oh, okay. but everyone from 1 to 22 I'd beat. Number 5. Teddy VLA Very soon, Paddy Pimblet returned to the Cage Warriors because the local crowd was really eager to see his new performances, especially given the fact that the 77th event that we are going to talk about also took place on the baddies' home soil in London. And where there's demand, there's supply from the league's bosses, which is hard to refuse, you got to agree. If we were to describe this action without mentioning any names, you would have thought that we are talking about some kind of a Hollywood movie or something. And all because the Liverpoolian once again distinguished himself by showing incredible immunity to taking damage and ability to find the right path to victory. Both have a very, very sound technical pace. Big combination! Or is he going to look to Tefila on the feet? And again, the trading big punches. After all the troubles, he successfully took VLA's back and cut his oxygen off with a submission choke in the second round. No one's knocking me out. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a scouser. We don't get knocked out. We crack on to any of Or is he going to look to Tefila in the feet? And again, the trading big punches. Paddy with a big squeeze. And there's the submission. Paddy Number 4. Johnny Frasche By September of 2016, the baddies' popularity and winning streak fused together and allowed him to contest the Cage Warriors' championship. 
At the 78th event, Pimblet shared the cage with Fresh A in the city of Liverpool. Do you kind of feel like you're in in like his area you now? Like people people that wouldn't concentrate on cage warriors normally would think, oh well, Conrad Air held this belt now, this fella's holding this belt. Do you think that adds like opens you up a little bit so, so more people can, can kind of see you and things like that? Uh, it does a little bit because people people just go back, but cage warriors belt, oh what's that? You know what I mean? People, uh, what's that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's lower than the championship. You know what I mean? People, they haven't got a clue about MMA. They think that it's meaningless, this belt, but it's not. You know what I mean? It's the biggest promotion in Europe. It's the biggest belt you can have, in my eyes, in Europe. It's the biggest belt you can have behind the UFC and, and, and the Bellator one. It doesn't matter to me, belt or not, know what I mean? I, I just want to be, I just want that belt. I've had, I've had the SEC belt. I want, a, I want a bigger, better belt before I do move on. Let's point out two things right away. First of all, this fight was supposed to identify the new featherweight champion. And secondly, on that night, the stars aligned in such a way that it was almost like life itself decided the outcome of the fight. The fans' energy in his native Liverpool was inspiring the Scousers so strongly that for their sake, he entered the cage with an intention to kill or be killed. Fortunately for him, it was namely the former. Paddy dismantled Johnny in one and a half minutes from the start of the fight, won by a TKO and successfully conquered the CW Featherweight Championship. It was a historical night for the baddie and the future of his career. Felt feels amazing, you know what I mean? To go out there in front of my own crowd and put on a performance like that. It was it was something special, you know what I mean? It's something I'll never forget for the rest of my life. That is up there with the best feelings in the world. With me team, dead in the crowd, celebrating with me mates and me family. Winning that belt's probably one of the best things that's ever happened in my life. One of the biggest moments in my career by far, but it was the fact that I was celebrating it there with all my friends, my family, my team. That was what made it special. Play need a big right hand! Paddy Pimblet! He's done it! Paddy Pimblet is the new Cage Warriors featherweight champion of the world! Number three, Alexis Savidis. Let's make another time skip because at that time, the Scouser was going through a rough patch in his career. He didn't have much time to celebrate his victory in the title fight. The guy suffered from injuries and health issues due to severe weight cuts. After the only defense of his title and losing it by a judge's decision, Pimblet returned to the octagon to try his luck at the 90th event and in the 155 pounds. Someone else, you know what I mean? The last few fights, it hasn't been me. I'll be honest, when I fought Johnny Frazee, if that wouldn't have finished in the first round, I might have looked like a bag that fight as well, but I got him out of there nice and fast. Throughout the bigger part of the first round, our hero was heavily pressuring his opponent on the ground, except for a couple of moments when he also had to showcase his defensive skills on the mat. And eventually, the fighters got the next round. As soon as the second round started, the Greek fighter rashly thought that the baddie wasn't a threat to him on the ground. And that's exactly what he quickly paid for. After cornering him to the fence, he missed the flying triangle, which changed into an armbar in a matter of seconds. In the end, the Scouser needed less than a minute to successfully return to the winning path. Amazing! Hey, you're not happy man, to get back in this cage, mate. Nothing better than whipping that flying gear out in front of the echo, man. He's got the angle, he's got the exception! Number 2. Jordan Levitt And closer to the end, we would like to overview at least two performances of Paddy Pimblett already inside the world's best league. By July of 2022, our hero was on a streak of four stoppage victories, two of which were earned in the UFC. At one of summer's fight night events, he shared the cage with Jordan Levitt, while both of them mutually disliked each other and it could be clearly seen in his interviews before the fight. You see no, it's not. I'm going to come out and I'm going to take his head off. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be shooting no takedowns. I'm coming to stand with him and to take his head 
off. I'm coming to take his chin on with me. The baddie's intentions were supported not only by words, but also his deeds. Sure, he didn't knock his opponent out, but still managed to earn a stoppage victory. Already closer to the middle of the second round, the Liverpoolian got the job done and choked out Jordan Levitt until he tapped in surrender. Obviously, as I said, I wanted to finish him in the first round, so I was pretty disappointed in between rounds, standing there talking to Alison Paul, like, what? I should have this in the bag by now, what's going on here? But I went into this fight with a lot of emotion, a lot of other things on my mind, know what I mean? So, like, as I say, in the cage after it, I was very critical of my own performance, but Paul spoke to me in the back and just said, what are you doing? You had a lot of other things on your mind going into the fight and... Number 1. Tony Ferguson And the final fight of the day is the fifth performance of the Englishman prospect inside the UFC. In the middle of December 2023, Paddy Pimblett entered the octagon to fight the legendary lightweight veteran Tony El Kukui Ferguson. Yeah, the boogeyman lad, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honour to share the cage with him to be honest lad, someone who's had a 12 fight win streak in the lightweight division, so that'll probably never get matched again. And, um, yeah, I'm, it's an honour to get in the cage with him lad, to be honest, can't wait to fight, can't wait to shut a lot of doubters up and prove all my fans right. There was a lot of hype in the lead up to this fight due to the fact that the boogeyman was training with David Goggins. What was even more exciting is that he was set to be in his corner. However, as history taught us, none of that helped Tony Ferguson. He suffered his seventh consecutive loss while Pimblett got the nod from all the judges and moved further in his career. It felt good, you know what I mean? I won every round dominantly. I thought the first round might have got a 10 8 on at least one scorecard, but um, yeah, I've just seen a little stat then. I'm in his last eight fights, only me and Michael Chandler have dropped them, you know what I mean? So take, take good things away from it. I blew me load a little bit at the end of the first round to finish him, so I was feeling it a little bit in the second and third, but as I say, I still got on top of him and ground and pounded him and dominated the fight, so I'm happy. What do you think is going to happen in the fight between the Scouser and Bobby Green? Will he be able to break into the top of the lightweight division or the King, just like he did with Grant Dawson, will show him that there are levels to this game? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.